Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another Dr. Cassette video. Today we're going to take a closer look at a very, very interesting piece of Chinese test equipment. Yeah, if you just wander around eBay and uh, take a look at some of the offerings coming from China, you'll soon find out that there is a lot of very, very interesting Chinese-made electronic test equipment that can do a whole lot of different things and all for a very, very agreeable price. This right here is the MK168 transistor tester. However, as we're going to find out, this thing can do a whole lot more than just transistors. This came to me for 32 euro. Uh, it uh, may very well be possible to get it for uh, a lot cheaper than that. This one does have the housing. There are versions that just come with a plain circuit board. And also, this shipped to me straight from Germany, so didn't have to import anything from, uh, from Hong Kong or wherever. So that made things a lot easier and considerably quicker. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look inside, because I guess that's uh, what you're all interested in. So uh, let's go ahead and take out the screws. There are four screws. It does come with four screws, but since I had some trouble with this, uh, I decided to only put in two screws so I can open it faster if I have to. There it is, all open up, and uh, as you can see, it's running of a 9-volt battery. This uh, has a little display module sitting on top of it. The actual circuit is uh, underneath of that, and uh, eh, you can't really see it, I guess. Eh, maybe. You can see there is an IC tucked away down in there. That is actually an, uh, an AT Mega, I believe they are called, uh, microcontroller. And uh, this thing uh, is running off of a software that, uh, from what I was able to find out, seems to be a, um, a development uh, of a German web forum. So, basically, <laughs> Yeah, they've, uh, they've taken all of that and uh, built just uh, the circuit board. And I'm not even sure if this uh, layout was made in China. Um, it, it does look quite profes professionally done, uh, especially this, uh, the strain relief on the 9-volt battery. Uh, I wouldn't really expect that from a Chinese product, but I may be wrong. This uh, is very, very well made. This little unit is not the only thing you get. You also get something to plug into those mini banana jacks. The one thing you get is this. It plugs in like so, no problem. And then you get this uh, repurposed IC holder where you can plug in your uh, components to test them. Now, um, you also get some, uh, some pads on the circuit board, as you can see. However, I do think this is uh, kind of uh, pointless, so let's put that to the side again and uh, go with the other thing that comes with it, and that is these proper little leads, these test leads that uh, have a little contact coming out of them. Much nicer, much more handy, so uh, you have three of those, and that's what I've been using. So, now, let's go ahead and uh, see what this does. Now, we press test, lights up green, no unknown or damaged part, and uh, yes indeed, there ain't no part hooked up to this. As you may have seen when you uh, press the test button, it also uh, shows you the remaining voltage of the battery. That's definitely a very, very nice touch. Anyway, uh, I have prepared this uh, little thing with a uh, couple of components, and you can already see there is a lot more in there than just uh, transistors. This right here is a, uh, a 2SC1815, I think that's a NPN transistor, just a 
standard little thing. There we have the transistor hooked up and thanks to the magic of video editing you don't even have to watch me fiddling about with the wires. Let's press the test and it is indeed an NPN. And this is the absolutely brilliant thing. I really love this. You don't have to worry about which connection is what. Like on a lot of multimeters that do have a transistor tester that uh, unfortunately relies on you hooking the transistor up in a certain way. You do get one, two, three, and then collector, emitter, and base. And it just went away, so let's press that again. But uh, that way you can identify a completely unknown part. You don't even have to know what kind of a housing this is. And that's really quite brilliant. This is the, uh, the current amplification factor, 169, that seems to be about right. And then we have the forward voltage of the uh, diode, 718 millivolts, that seems to be about right for a silicon transistor. This is an ancient late 1960s germanium transistor. Let's see what this does. There it is, it's a PNP and we do get uh, the um, collector to emitter current which is kind of interesting then it switches over to uh, once again amplification 162 and then this forward voltage only 166 millivolts that is the big difference between germanium and silicon the silicon devices a silicon diode typically has a forward voltage of around 700 millivolts. On uh, germanium it's much much lower. As you can uh, clearly see once this switches over there it is. And that is why you're always building your uh, simple little crystal AM radios using germanium diodes because uh, this is much lower, so uh, it's going to be much more sensitive. And this is yet another transistor. This time, however, it's not a common bipolar transistor. As you can see, this is a MOSFET. Uh, negative uh, E MOS, as you can see. Once again, our identification is right there. Uh, gate, source and drain, as well as a little diode. That's integrated in the unit. We do get the capacity. The uh, I think that is probably the gate um, capacity. We get uh, ah dear. I don't know what that is, and uh, of course it has already scrolled once. Okay, so we do get the um, identification where the diode actually is uh, hooked up to the leads, as well as the uh, forward voltage of that. So that's what this is, MOSFET. Now um, this can also test triax, but unfortunately I don't have any of those. So let's continue with another thing. This is a power transistor. Let's see what it says about this one. And we're getting this. This is really weird. It's showing two resistors instead of a transistor. So there is something wrong with this thing. So I guess this is going to go into the garbage because uh, not behaving like a transistor should behave. However, this basically already leads us to the next thing. Our transistor tester can also test resistors. Well, let's go ahead and try that out with this uh, high powered 60 ohm resistor. Let's just hook it up to two random leads, see what it does. Fifty nine point eight ohms. And here we have another resistor. Let's see what this one does. Resistor. 4.58 ohms and this is what is that 4.7 ohms this is supposed to be according to the color code 
So go ahead and uh, take a look at this odd thing here. This is uh, out of a computer power supply. It's a uh, it's a diode bridge. You can see if uh, the camera was going to focus, it has a little circuit diagram on there. Now let's see if this thing is able to uh, detect what this is. We're all set to go. Let's press the test button. And, well, as you can see, it notices one of the diodes. Get the uh, reverse current, which of course is very low in the nanoampere range. If it was higher than that, the thing would be broken, the diode. Once again, forward voltage and the capacity of the whole thing. This, yep, a diode also acts as a capacitor. Now anyway, um, let's go ahead and take off one of the leads. Let's see if it uh, manages to notice uh, there is that diode. What else can this thing do? Well, let's go ahead and put on an LED and see what it uh, thinks about that. There is a little red LED, standard type of thing. Test. Well, as you can see, the LED has been flashing. Two nanoamps worth of reverse current. Forward voltage 1.67 volts. That's kind of obvious because that is the uh, the voltage that the uh, LED needs to light up. Also get uh, some capacity on this. How about one of these? Yep, it can also test capacitors. This is a uh, 0.1 microfarad. Let's go ahead and uh, now I have found out that this uh, sometimes is having problems measuring capacitors with the uh, with a one lead so let's just put that to the side we won't be needing that anyway just uh, use these two see what it does and we have 100 nanofarads 0.1 microfarads let's go ahead and test this thing this is a uh, an electrolytic capacitor 1000 microfarads 16 volts yep this thing can actually do that uh, because uh, a lot of the capacity meters that I've seen will only go up to like 10 microfarads or something. This one can do more than that, which is quite brilliant. However, the one thing you always have to make sure, and uh, yes, I do keep forgetting that, as a safety precaution, you always want to short out your capacitor before hooking it up, because if it discharges into the unit, that's probably going to be a rather lethal event. So, uh, have that hooked up. Press the test button. Takes a while. You can see it has already detected that there is a capacitor hooked up to this. So basically what this most likely does is it charges the capacitor partially and then it uh, measures the time it needs to discharge again. That's how you can measure capacity. So anyway, we get uh, our uh, capacity, obviously, 946.3 microfarads, so a little bit low. Try that one more time. Yeah, it keeps turning off. <laughs> there it is. This is the brilliant thing, ESR. Yep, this can measure the electric series resistance 0.11 ohms. Now that's extremely low for this capacitor right here. I'd say there are our values. Now let's go ahead and do something interesting. This is of course a uh, fairly new brand name Nichicon capacitor. Let's go ahead and uh, take this freaking old 1970s Alna thing and as you can see 1000 microfarads, 16 volts, exactly the same specification. So let's hook this one up, see how this performs. 1062 microfarads, 2.1 ohms of electric series resistance. So there you can see much, much higher. That is why uh, on uh, older units, uh, recapping is uh, such a popular thing to do because the ES ESR just goes up as the capacitor ages. 
uh, on cheap capacitors it also tends to be kind of high. So that is a very, very, very great thing that this can do. Really love it for that. That's uh, going to make uh, repairing things much easier. You may have noticed I have not been testing inductors. Well, that is because this cannot test inductors. Those will just show up as resistors.